Okay, here we are back in League of Legends. This time in the form of a post-game commentary, as you guessed it, as the title implies. Hmm, who can I choose? Who would be a good fit for a team that's not showing a damn thing? I know. Skarner. So I didn't realize it at the time, but it's actually been a good amount of time since I put up a Skarner game. Truth be told, he's not actually that helpful right now in the tank meta. He's pretty good against guys that you need to lock down, and in this case it's going to be Pantheon, so he does prove to be worthwhile. It's just he's not really going to shine for damage. You are pretty much just a sponge, a tank yourself. And then when you're dealing with guys who are really, really mobile, having that suppression is so damn helpful. But anyway, I will be building Righteous Glory this game. The three items I'm going to build are Cinder Hulk, of course, because it's Skarner, Trinity, because I like the movement speed, the Sheen, the... Actually, well, the movement speed you get off the Phage component is also pretty helpful. And then 20% CDR, so you can ult in everything more often. And then the Righteous Glory for even more CDR, a little bit of extra mana that gives you even more mana regen through your Spires. And then you get to run really, really fast at people. I haven't gotten the chance to actually test that as, as like a kidnap opportunity, but that's one of those things I'm looking forward to in a future game. So, with the Righteous Glory, I can serve as a ball delivery system, but normally we'd be relying on NAR for that type of thing. But we have Twitch, I just have to protect him because the Pantheon is going to be a problem. The Ori, ball delivery, peel, all sorts of fun stuff she provides. Our support is going to be, wait for it, wait for it, Karma. So yes, I can run even faster to deliver the ball. And then the enemy mid laner is Corky. So if you look, they have a pretty solid AD comp. Sejuani and Corky do deal magic damage. Corky actually deals like, um, I'd say at best an intermediate level unless he goes for the full AP build. But yeah. Scorpion just doesn't get much love these days. But like I said, if you play him, you are not really going to deal a lot of damage. You can still duel people, especially if they're stupid enough to fight you in your spires. But yeah. So this game is going to be kind of interesting because you get to see Nar throw away the entire lane at level 1. And I do end up having to call him out on this. He does rage and yada yada yada. So right here we can start calling attention to summoner spells, keystones, and the like. I genuinely do not know why they are both running Warlord's Bloodlust. That's severe and quirky. Thrush, you can see he has Bond of Stone, so that allows him to do some Art and Sensor cheese. It's not as reliable, though. As for Karma, Windspeaker, Twitch, he has Fervor. Ori is packing Teleport with her Thunderlords. Nar is running Fervor and Teleport. Pantheon, however, is running Thunderlords and Ignite. As for Sejuani, you can see she is similar to me, except she's running Flash instead of Ghost. So, very quick loading screen, and we're in. So, I think I went for the Talisman just so I could clear the chicken camp. You actually can start chickens at level 1 if you take that. But I want to say this game I do go for red buff first. Overall, Skarner isn't too level dependent once you hit level 6 and have access to your ult. At that point, it doesn't matter nearly as much. I will be maxing E this game, and I'm going tanky. If you wanted to go AD, by all means, you can max the Q. It's just... I don't like a squishy scorpion. I mean, he's supposed to be a crystal scorpion. He doesn't have those chitin exoskeletons that the real-life scorpions do. He goes one step further in his durability. So right here, the team is moving to try to contest this, and the enemy team actually is making no response. So I'm kind of confused why Karma's staying next to me, because if the enemy saw her come in here, they know I'm here now, too. So if she went that way, she'd actually be best staying next to Twitch, and they'd think that they're alone. But anyway, I just move on out so we can go ahead and take this. I don't know if we all get the gold, or if only two of us do. The important thing is, I do, so I can get my items. And I guess I actually did start Chickens Level 1. 
So one of the things I actually do like about starting this, especially when Twitch is your AD carry, is you don't have to worry about his poison accidentally stealing your buff. Since he's not leashing, his poison is totally not an issue. So Ori was kind enough to assist with the ball, Karma gave a Q. And the main thing about this is, since my Q is AoE, I'm gaining healing off of each chicken for the Talisman. I still am losing a little bit of health, but it's not really a significant amount. And you can see I cleared that, and I'm still at, what, 75% health? I go ahead and take the W next, just because it helps block a little bit of damage. Overall, I'm not entirely sure if the uh, W or the E would help a little bit more. I want to say the W, to be honest. The difference between the two, though, is the E is like a one second stun, meanwhile the exoskeleton lasts maybe one and a half seconds at this level, this rank, this health, or I can consider it as metric-wise, since he scales off of all those, technically. If you don't know, the W has a both a health and an AP ratio. So by leveling up, I get a, I could get more AP, but I do get more health, so in turn the shield will level up, even if I don't put more points into it. So right there I now have my stun, I'm willing to take the blue buff. So you put up the shield after the stun times out, and you can block pretty much two hits. It's just a lot of time to will on this sucker. So in case you're wondering how Gnar threw the lane away already, he started a Durand Blade into Pantheon. So I didn't show this in a game beforehand. He's gonna die right here and then Pantheon's gonna come kill me in case you're wondering. So I don't have Smite here, but if you notice, Pantheon's on the other side of the tower, so he's going to come through the Tri-Brush and get me. So real quick on how Nar utterly fucked this up. He started a Duran Blade. And unless he's planning to early cheese Pantheon himself, you can see he took a longsword after that back instead of going for a cloth armor or anything defensive. He has literally no potions, nothing. He seriously teleported back into lane to die. They force him out already, even though he just teleported back. And I can't emphasize this enough. Unless you're going to level 1 cheese him, you have no reason to go anything other than a defensive item early against him. Once he hits level 3, that's his power spike. Every level after that, he's actually going to get progressively weaker throughout the game. The Nar just fucked up royally, and he's going to potentially cost us the game over the course of this. And sadly, it really does get to the point where I have to reserve my Ultra Pantheon. So, real quick, in a game I played that I didn't upload this one because my AD carry decided to troll and feed instead of actually play the game, I had an Orn against Pantheon, and I had no idea that matchup was so freaking brutal for the Spartan. What the Orn ended up doing is I think he went Corrupting Potion, and after that, he just built his items in lane. He survived. First item was either a Duran Shield, a Cloth Armor, or something like that. I don't remember offhand. And he survived, and then, like, level 5, he killed Pantheon. Solo. So, I find it really amusing that, like, the lowest win rate guy in the game is actually an answer to one of the strongest top laners in the game. So anyway, right here I'm getting some vision, denying this from the enemy, because I'm thinking top is over. Our only way to win this is if we can kill the bot lane. So right here we got her flash, I burn my ghost, I start procking my Q, we can manage to kill her. And I'm not entirely sure what they were thinking here, but... Yeah. Flash and dies to poison. And what's worse is... She goes down too. So that is massive for Twitch. This basically gives us a way back into the game since our hyper carry, the guy who's actually getting stronger with every single level, will have a little bit easier transition in the early game. So anyway, since I'm going Cinder Hulk, I want to go ahead and grab the Cinder and the Red Smite here. And Red Smite, hopefully, is obvious. It's my ticket to 
potentially surviving Pantheon. Emphasis on the potentially part. So the bot lane, very, very favorable for us. We got three kills down there. I got assists off of two of those. I think Twitch did get something off Severe. I don't remember offhand. But yeah, the final game for this weekend will be me answering a Twitch. So if you want to see that, in case you're wondering, all the games are jungle games too. So Twitch is on my side this game, but that won't be the case by the end. So one thing that I do like about getting the Cinder early is it does make your AoE clear even better. You can power through the wolves and the chickens a lot better. It also makes it so you only have to hit the... Krugs once I want... the mini Krugs once I want to say. So right here I was wondering if they were going to try to move in and get some vision on me and potentially invade or something. That's why I'm dropping this ward. Overall, I was expecting a lot more cheese because Sejuani may be a little upset about how things played out, and she could be looking to settle the score. So right there we get his Valkyrie. I ult him in. For some reason, Ori deems to not use Shockwave. I'm not entirely sure why. Move, I move the mouse there to show you, yeah, it's up. We could have pulled him further back and then just wailed on him, but... Or he has a plan, I guess. And if you're wondering about the whole Gnar thing, you can see once he transforms, he's able to turn that around. And had he gone tanky at the beginning, it would have never been an issue. So if I were Corky, I would be heading down bot immediately. That's why I pinged that. Try and get some vision here, see is he coming down the river, or what exactly. So right there, I used my E on Severe, so that way Karma's root would go through. You can see she dies to the poison in the end, because I had red buff and other stuff on her, Twitch poison. And I managed to collect Corky. Sadly, I'm not running Bounty Hunter here because that would have been my second stack, and I got it off of the two that are going to be kind of tricky to catch because Corky has Valkyrie and Severe has On the Hunt to get away. So I cannot emphasize it enough. It seriously is the bot lane that's keeping us in this game. So one Q, and then the Cinder will kill the rest. And then I don't have to worry about my mana, because once I get in the Spire, my mana regen skyrockets. I'm not entirely sure what Ori was thinking, or planning, or anything there, but anyway, we get to go back. And generally, I like to get the two daggers first. And I don't know if I ever explained this, but the reason why... If you can, if you, like, if you can't afford a completed piece, the daggers will build into something that gives you CDR. Yes, but the thing is, your jungle item does give you a little bit of bonus damage on hit when clearing. So getting more daggers gives you more attack speed and therefore more damage overall. So right here, my ult is up. I'm wondering, hey, are they gonna try to pull something? I'm not entirely sure what Ori was up to, to be completely honest. But yeah. So right here I want to secure this because I might be able to pull someone towards the Dragon Pit, even though they can kind of see. And worse going to worse, it's just mobility so I can get around more often. So I wanted to clear out that pink war in the brush, but it sounded like On the Hunt was used there, I'm not 100% sure. Thing is, Sejuani is here, or we went back mid. And I'm kind of at a loss as to what I should do. Since I don't have Flash or anything, I don't want to Blast Cone over the wall. You can see it was kind of a bad idea anyway, since Sedge is down here. She does whiff her ult. So right there I try to pop as many walls as possible. And fortunately Twitch's poison only scales off his levels, so it's not going to be enough to kill Thresh.
So right there, I think by dropping that, Sejuani may have panicked and stopped her recall. Problem is, she... well, Mantheon just sky falls in. So right there, I get the kill on him. The shutdown would have helped Twitch a lot more. Corky's on his way down. And this is some pressure off of... Nar, but he... I can't emphasize enough how much that guy screwed up, and by extension screwed us. So you gotta like how Pantheon thinks there. And you have to remember, he does not have Teleport, he has Ignite, which means he had to use Skyfall to get in. So right there we now have CDR, and I grab the Sheen component. The Mana Crystal gives you the least out of anything, it's just... I know I'm gonna have to make another stop before I can actually build my Trinity. So I want something that I can... Like, I don't know if I'm gonna have the chance to drop the Pink War, that's the main thing. I've had that in my inventory for, like, five minutes now, which is a lot longer than it should be. And in the event I don't get to drop it, I need to make sure I have the inventory space to actually collect something that I can use for my Trinity. But anyway, right there I hit level 8 so I get to put my first point into the W. That causes the ratio to improve. So right there I pinged her, did a little bit of harass. I'm not running Bounty Hunter, or no, I'm not running Bandit, I'm running the left tree instead. So right here in anticipation of a fight, I want to get my Spire up. And I was hoping he had actually used Flay, but I have no idea how he was able to just walk away from Twitch like that. I'm guessing Twitch may not have saw me on the map or something. I'm not entirely sure. But that's my ghost. Overall, it's a small cooldown, so I'm not too concerned. It's just a little disappointing. And overall, I should also point out, if you're coming here from last week's games where I had no commentary whatsoever because of the people I was paired up with, seriously, if you do not believe me, watch those videos. They seriously are that stupid. The people I'm with this week are actually significantly better. Even though the Nar is just a complete screw-up, he is not actually nearly as bad as the Three Stooges in the Nocturne game, or... I'm trying to remember who else there was. It's just the Stooges left a lasting impression on me because they... Like, they screwed up at every stage of the game. <laughs> it's very, very rare that you get to see that. Like, Nar can at least see, see people late. Those three were just worthless. So right here I want to take her pink ward. And unfortunately right here... So I clicked on the blasting plant, but it had me attack Corky instead, and I'm not entirely sure why. So if I'd been able to hit that, I should have been fine, but still we get Mantheon's flash. We get a lot of flashes. Nar shows up, but Thrush Lantern saves Sedge. Still, they can't really afford to stay. Severe's gonna spend a lot of the game split pushing, in case you're wondering. So we get to do a little bit of damage to the tower, but I'm not entirely sure how a Quirky managed to push them off. I had to guess they might have just run out of minions or something. So right there, Twitch squandered his stealth. As a result, he got seen in the Tribrush, and we cannot kill Severe. Actually, I guess it wasn't... I don't know where they might have had a ward. This world is so, so right here I don't want to lose my Spire. And yes, I'm not even going to comment on who just died. The thing is, I'm getting close to level 9 so I can get another point into my E. So 
So I'm doing that to aggro the dragon, so she'll take some damage from the dragon itself. The wind dragon doesn't really deal a lot of damage with his breath, it's just he shoots like four times a second or something like that. And there she is. So one thing to remember about Sejuani is, I don't remember what move of hers it is, I think it's the W that has the passive effect of giving her a bunch of free defensive stats. And that will block for the first hit. After you hit her once, that will go away, and then you can actually hit her for normal damage. So as a result, whenever we get into fights, I'm going to try to hit her with my E or something just to disable that passive. And yeah, so first tower goes over to Mantheon, giving him even more gold to snowball with. And as a result, there's... It's just going to be Twitch who suffers for it, I'm afraid. So finally I get to drop my pink ward. I have to drop it here so that we can try to get some control over the vision around here. Looking for a pink ward around here. And I was kind of surprised the scuttle crap was up. Meanwhile, Ori dies. And right there I'm kind of stating the obvious. The reason why we're fighting down bot is because that's the only place to fight. While you don't normally want to gank losing lanes, it's just... Everyone else is winning on their own, so there's just nowhere else for her to be. To put it into example for you, Pantheon is going to kill Nar no matter what, because Nar doesn't build right. So if she shows up there, she may not even get an assist just because Pantheon can kill him that easily. By the way, if you notice, Nar has Ninja Tabby. So while everyone makes a big deal out of these are so efficient, yada yada yada, remember that Pantheon is an AD caster. So if you don't get the significance of that, you're spending 500 gold on those Tabby, just the recipe cost, and what you actually get out of that is 25 movement speed for 500 gold. Since he's an AD caster, he's not going to auto-attack you unless it's to kill you. He's going to spam his spears until you're low enough, then he's going to jump on you and then throw more spears. So, Nar going for the Ninja Tabby was just more idiocy, I'm afraid. If you find yourself in his situation, you're actually better going for any other item. I would strongly recommend going for um, Randuin's Omen. Even though he doesn't actually build any crit, due to Heartseeker Strike's passive, he will still deal crit damage. So you can actually mitigate some of that with the Randuin's Omen. Since Nar is resourceless, he doesn't really have any incentive to build like a Frozen Heart or even a Righteous Glory. I cannot emphasize it enough. Randuin's Omen, amazing buy. Ninja Tabby, you spent 500 gold, 25 movement speed. Granted, it will help him in the long term, it's just the name of the game for him should be Survival. So if he wants to get those later, by all means, that will work. It'll help a little bit against Quirky, it'll help against Severe. But it does squat for him now. To be honest, I probably should have looked up Nar's rating to see if he's a silver player here, or if he's just been boosted, because it's kind of bad. So I don't really want to move around here until we know where Corky is, because if he turns... well, if he shows up, we're dead. Case in point. So yes, Nar built a black cleaver and he still does that little damage. I do not know what he's actually maxing or anything. So the good news is he's not really worth a lot of gold. So we managed to burn the Sedge and the Corky ults, and they didn't get as much from that as they would have if they killed literally anyone else. But anyway, we now have the completed trinity, so my next item is going to be Righteous Glory. That's going to give me movement speed, and it's going to help make me a little bit more durable against Mantheon. Plus, it also does give you health regen, which is really nice. For this game, I wasn't sure if I should try to go for, to go for an adaptive helm. It will help for the quirky W, and I guess a little bit of the missile poke. 
but I want to say it actually will affect the Heartseeker Strike and Spears, depending on how much CDR Mantheon has. Generally for him, you don't want to build a lot of CDR, you just want more power. So notice who we go on first. Now that he's out of the way, it's a much simpler and straightforward fight. I still do go down, but we managed to get two of them for just me, and keep in mind they were focusing the dragon for part of that. So in the end, Nar makes a pretty good ult, gives him Corky. Ori chickens out to save Twitch. She says it's either you or me, but then you have to remember she has a shield, so... Yeah, that doesn't really hold a lot of water to me, I'm afraid. So right there I grab Swifties because I'm a little concerned about slows from Thrushbox, Thrushflay, I think Sedge W, the active effect, has a slow on it. And then I think Quirky Package has a slow on it. Pretty much I'm in agreement with Twitch here, in case you're wondering. Quirky, or, well, the one I want to talk about is Ori here. Ori is... not doing the greatest. For all intents and purposes, she's essentially a support even in the mid lane role. And to protect Twitch, I would say it would have been worth her life. In case you're wondering, you will see me die, I think, one more time this game. And if I can save Corky, it's worth it. That's pretty much my win condition here. Keep him alive and basically spray and pray. So right here I'm trying to disable her passive. I try to drag Corky in, I end up eating her ult. And yeah, Mantheon hurts that freaking much. So sadly, even though I did ult him, I do not get an assist. But like I said, I'm gonna pile on Pantheon and do everything I can to protect the rat. And now I do not want to go down there to Severe because there's nothing I can do to her. Due to her passive, she can kite me extremely easily. Basically all she has to do is throw her Q behind her and she can run away. It'll hit me twice if she lands the first hit. And if I try to actually get with real close to her, she can just auto me. Like that. So right there I was just trying to stall a little bit. Karma was the W. And I probably should have waited to get the Glacial Shroud since that would give me 10% CDR. That way I can have my Exoskeleton up a little bit more often and I can ult more. So anyway, during this downtime I can talk a little bit about how Skarner works in case you're wondering because you don't see him that often. Your passive are the Crystal Spires, so those are those six control points on the map. When you're inside them, you get movement speed, you get attack speed, and you get mana regen. And the mana regen, I think, is actually fixed at all stages of the game, but the movement speed and attack speed you get actually do scale with your level. So every level, you get more and more. Q is Crystal Slash. You basically swing your claws around you, dealing damage to everything nearby. Once you land it, that gives you a charge of Energize or something like that, and that just means you deal a little bit of extra magic damage on your Q for all future casts until that buff expires. The buff refreshes every time you use it. W is Crystalline Exoskeleton. You put up your shield around you, you get that shield, you get movement speed while it's active, and it scales off your health, and it has like a 10% ratio or something like that, so you can be very, very durable late. Your E is Crystal Poison, it's a linear skill shot. When you hit an enemy, you slow them, and then it marks them. If you can auto-attack them, it will stun them. So right here, I was kind of hoping we could kill her, but they land the hook on me, so... Yeah. We still have the setup to land a really nice shockwave, though, so I can definitely live with that. Thresh goes down, like I said, I'm trying to pop as many walls in the box as I can. So right here I'm going to Red Smite Severe. I've got Crystal Slash and Cinder Hulk her. As a result, she dies to my dot. And Sejuani died in the process. Now, unfortunately, Twitch goes way too gung-ho. He dies to the Corky. We do get the Mantheon in exchange, but trading Mantheon for him and... Well, we lost two, actually. 
that was by no means a good trade. So right here, I don't really know why Nara's trying to fight him. Instead, I can look to doing some counter jungling. By the way, you also get your passive for, like, one second, I think, when you proc the stun on your E, regardless of whether or not you're an Aspire or not. And then finally, your ult is Impale, which does what its name sounds. You stab them with your tail, you lift them up off the ground, they are then suppressed, and you get to carry them around, kidnapping them, and hopefully dragging them to their doom. Sadly, this game with the Ori and the Narf so far behind, that's not going to happen, I'm afraid. But anyway, with the towers and kills we got, I am much, much wealthier now. So I can go ahead and finish that off, and then I can go pick up the Righteous Glory. So, to be completely honest, I'm probably going to be building Righteous Glory on a lot of guys from here to come. It's basically a really nice armor item that also gives you regen. It's especially nice on guys who have mana as a resource, since you do have to build it from a Glacial Shroud. And just can't emphasize enough, it's a very, very good item if you're someone who needs to engage. Like, when I get around to doing the next Volibear game, I do want to build it on him. In case you're wondering, for last week's box, I don't think I actually talked about that one. That happened in one of the losing games where I was playing... You guessed it, Shadow Assassin Kane. And I was the only thing keeping the team afloat that game. Sadly, I cannot carry four dead weights, so we still did lose, but that was enough for me to get his box. So, right here, losing my domain would be really bad. And right here, Mantheon lands his Grand Skyfall. I do not reach him in time, so I grab the next best thing, but it's too late. As soon as Twitch goes down, that's literally game. Well, literally the fight for us. It's not the game over. We pretty much have nothing left. Like I said, Ori, Nar, too far behind to matter. They are literally CC machines or supports, or if you want to consider them. The game lives and dies by Twitch. So, I'm not entirely sold about the whole double crit item thing. I would have preferred for him to get something else after the... Randuin, or not the Randuins, the Rabbit. No, it's not Rabbitons. What's Runon's Hurricane? That's what it is. So if you got something else after the Hurricane instead of a Shiv, like Life Steal, even Penetration would help to a certain degree. I think we would have been a lot better off. So anyway, I'm grabbing a Ruby Crystal because no matter what you build, from here on out, you want to have a little bit of health. Since I'm running Courage of the Colossus, that will cause me to have a bigger shield. I did manage to slow Severe. And I'm pulling her, trying to get her away, but it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. I accidentally smited a minion, you can see Thresh died to Twitch. And if you notice Corky on the minimap, I'm making a beeline to intercept him. I do not know if Valkyrie was down or what, but down he goes. And that was a shutdown for the team, even though it was only 30 gold to go around. So grab the Spire, Sejuani is the only one up. And due to my build, I can easily tank Baron. It is literally no problem for me. And with the combined... So in case you're wondering, Twitch Expunge, the Sheen proc, and the Smite actually does give us a lot of burst at the very end. So right here I'm trying to just chase her away. And my Impale's coming up, and we have to reserve this for Mantheon. There's just really no two ways about it. Unless we can get lucky and pick him off some other way, like if he gets subject to a Nar stun or something, that would work too. But anyway, the team is recalling, so I would prefer for everyone to get out too, especially since Quirky just got his package. If we can get out of here, he loses the movements beyond the package and it just becomes another spell. So right here is extremely cocky, but I knew my speed, and hers too, I knew I could get out of that. So I grab the Kindle Gem, that gets me 40% CDR. I can turn that into a few different things. I could build a Warmog, so I really want to. 
The raw HP would be very helpful for just a bigger courage of the Colossus Shield, plus it gives me even more regen. And then, like I said, I think that's a component in the Adaptive Helm, too, because that is worth getting, too. Anyway, Twitch got the red buff. It's a lot better on him than me, since I can just run in there these days. Sadly, we never really had dragon control this game, but on the flip side, it's just been a game of wind dragons. So wind dragon is actually helpful for me in trying to run in there. It doesn't help the enemy team as much, since they do have gap closers. They have skyfall, I don't remember what the sedge charge is called. Corky has Valkyries, and Severe has on the hunt. This is like the one team comp where it's not at, like it doesn't even have some sort of secondary use. So anyway, this is the end of the game, I believe. Mantheon jumps in, he jumps on Twitch. I tank this death sentence, and I suppress Mantheon so he can't do anything. Then I pull him into the team, and Twitch kills him. So right there, I kill Thrush. And that's pretty much all there is. I mean, there's nothing to defend their base anymore. Severe is up, yes, but I actually have enough armor to her. I literally do not fear her. She is nothing to me. So right here, we did get the Ardent Sensor attack speed bonus, so we get to melt the tower even though we didn't really have minions at the time. And you can see I tank that, and it's not a problem. I have healing from the Righteous Glory. Everything will be well in seconds. Emphasis on the seconds part, because we're going for the win. So Impale is coming up shortly. I will use that before this game ends. So right here, name of the game is Save Twitch. So Mantheon jumps in, but he goes down. Quirky is going to fall victim to a Gnar. Gnar dies to the fountain. I suppress Quirky so that Twitch can kill him. And that's all, folks. So sadly, I do not get a mastery token from this. This was only an S-minus type game, and my damage is not really going to be that high up there because I was more about utility and movement speed here, trying to lock down priority targets and save the Twitch. So I want to save Twitch. I want to honor Twitch because he was our game here. <laughs> no two ways about it. So Skarner, someone we may see again in the near future. We'll have to see. I'm not making any promises, but I'm also not saying no. You can see the graphs, and I am out of here. I'm the hero of light. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.